today here on RoboStrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we are behind the wheel of a 2018 Camry XSE. Now the Camry was once the best selling vehicle outside the F-150 in America for a number of years, selling well in excess of 400,000 a year. Now the four door family sedan midsize segment is a bit of a dying market. Everyone's going to crossovers. So we're gonna take a look at it from that standpoint. Plus we have swapped into this right after our week with the Mazda 6. So it makes a very nice back to back and we can definitely compare and contrast the two. Which do we like better? Is this a good vehicle? Is it something you can, should consider? That's what we're gonna find out on this episode of rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. version of the Toyota Camry has been out for a little bit. Uh, if you go back, we did a first drive on this back when it was introduced out in the Portland area. We thought it was a pretty good vehicle at the time. The new TNGA platform made a huge difference in the quality of the ride and the quietness of the cabin. And we literally have not been in a Camry since then. So jumping back in this, it took us a minute to kind of remember that driving experience to bring us back up to speed. So what do, what things carry over from that first drive and what things do we have a different perspective on at this point? Well, a few things. One, the ride is still very good. Um, the cabin is very quiet. Things we still like a lot. Um, there are some things we notice now, especially after having driven the Mazda 6 right before this, that stick out in our minds a little bit. First and foremost is the transmission in this. Now, like all modern transmissions, it's trying to be as efficient as possible, and this one does a good job. Um, we did a highway run the other day and did about 38 to the gallon and we're cruising on the highway at 80 miles an hour, which is standard for this area. Now, it is stickered, at, sorry, grab, grab the, uh, the right, uh, the right uh, Monroney here, at uh, 28 city, 39 highway, 32 combined. So yeah, I would say that's probably, the, the, the highway is right, combined, 28-ish, eh, 26-ish, somewhere in that ballpark, um, you know, hard to say haven't paid that much attention to the fuel mileage this this week with it but did make a note on the highway run. One of the things we noticed right away is that unless you select sport for this transmission it's laggy. Uh, you put your foot into it and it kind of waits a second and then it grabs and, and then you go. You put it in sport and there's a much more of a direct connection between your throttle, the, your inputs in the throttle, and the movement of the car. And this has to do with how it's locking up the torque converter. Uh, understandable, but in stop and go driving, it's really annoying if you don't have it in sport mode because of, of that lag. Especially if you are trying to get out into traffic or cross a couple lanes in traffic from a stop to try and get from one spot to another. The timing becomes critical and crucial. Uh, so sport mode makes a huge difference and it really should be the standard mode. And of course, you, you select it, you shut the car off, it goes back to the default. It doesn't stay where you left it. So one area where we can definitely can compare and contrast the Mazda 6 and this Camry is in the interior. The Mazda 6 interior is nicer. Uh, a little bit nicer interiors, a little bit better finish. Um, and just how things are put together. Um, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's just that when you compare them back to back, the Mazda was just nicer, it just was. Now, one area where we can say the Camry is better is in the infotainment system in the UI. So with the, uh, with the Camry here, you have buttons and knobs, thank you very much, and it's far more intuitive. Now, 
the Mazda is okay with the knob here, but it's once you get into the menus and trying to move around and stuff, it, you, you can get lost in it and try to find stuff, and then it's kind of confusing how to move stuff. Now, after a number of years of going through Mazdas, I finally got the hang of it, but if you first get into it and you, uh, you know, just try to do stuff, it's a pain in the ass. This, this is intuitive. This is like how it's been done for 50 years, right? So if, longer than 50 years in the sense of knobs and buttons and things being logically laid out. So this is where the uh, Toyota is much better than the Mazda. But other than that, in the interior, it's, you know, it, it's definitely a win for the Mazda on that. So one of the things that we did notice in our time with the vehicle, and it's been kind of low to mid 80s in the week that we've had it for most of the week, is especially with this glass sunroof, and I don't know if it's specifically because of that or the black interior or just the amount of glass in here. So, you know, visibility is pretty good in here. This cabin heats up very quickly and is uh, gets very warm. Most of these big panoramic sunroofs now have a coating on it to keep the, um, the UV coating to keep some of the heat out of it or reflect the, the, the heat from direct sun. This one didn't seem to do it. So when you get in and you fire it up, even if you have the, the AC set on like 73, 74, it has to blow very hard for a long time to bring the temperature down um, to, a, to a comfortable level. On top of that, again, at a $35,000, $36,000 price point and a kind of top level trim here, no cooled seats. Seems like a miss. Uh, heated seats, sure. Um, no heated steering wheel. At least, let me double check that. Nope, no, nope, no, I don't see. If it has heated steering, uh, we have not seen the button. Sometimes Toyota likes to hide that in places. But again, haven't seen that again. That's, that's a big miss, especially here in Michigan. And especially since Toyota's one main engineering facility or one of their main engineering facilities is in Michigan. That's again, a big miss assembled in the US. Okay, enough of that. But yeah, no cooled seats, bit of a miss on this. The interior warms up a lot. So if you do get this, you do get the big sunroof and you live in a warm climate, make sure to uh, to close the sunshade and, and hopefully that'll help solve some of those, uh, the, the heat issues, the excessive heat issues here in the cabin. The other area, uh, what really sticks out for the Mazda over the Camry is in the engine. Not from a power standpoint so much, but from a NVH standpoint, this four-cell on the Camry just sounds unrefined. Now it's a good engine. It's a very, it's a very good engine. Uh, just when you put your foot into it and it makes noises, it's just it sounds a little harsh. Now, the interesting thing is the V6 that we drove out in Portland uh, especially in the luxury model, was night and day difference. And it's remembering that difference between the four cylinder and the six cylinder where it really sticks out. Where in the Mazda, there is only the four cylinder. Uh, and it was fine. And this just, it just lacks that little bit of refinement. And um, when you're spending the amount of money you are from this, it's, it's a bit of a miss. So one of the things that people find very important when shopping in this category is, does it have all the current safety systems? And this one does. Blind spot monitoring, uh, rear cross traffic alert, front uh, collision alert. It has all of them. And they're a little obnoxious. They are the lawyers we're really front and center on this. And I'll give you a couple examples. We're in stop and go traffic and just past an intersection and trying to creep up a little bit to let someone else in behind me. I can see that I have plenty of room, but this car starts beeping at me loudly and then it slams on the uh, the brakes to for uh, the automatic collision. When I still have, when I'm moving at maybe two miles an hour and I still have a good foot and a half between me and the car in front of me. Uh, this also came up in a parking uh, lot where there was, uh, I had certainly had plenty of room between me and the car that I was, you know, pulling up against in a, in a big shopping mall area, at the, going to the Home Depot. And uh, yeah, again, completely slams on the, the brakes and starts screaming at me with lots of beeps. Look, I'm going 
one or two miles an hour. If I just cranked the brakes, I would stop essentially immediately. I don't need that. It's really, really annoying. Uh, and for me, it's a huge demerit on this car. Now, for you, maybe it's fine and you don't care. But when the systems get in front of my intelligence and uh, how long have I been driving? 35 years almost, something like that, whatever. I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I, I'm pulling my Kimi Raikkonen on this thing. Is like, shut up, I know what I'm doing? Yes, yes, I do. Now, on the positive side of the technology, this has the Qi charger built in, and it's really good and very powerful. So, um, a lot of times with the Qi chargers that we've noticed in cars, we cannot get through the uh, the Apple kind of rubber uh, case here. It's, it doesn't line up well, especially because we have a, a magnet right behind here for in our personal vehicle for just you know throwing it up there on a, on a mount magnetic mount and it, and it, it stays it's, it's very good we were able to charge on the Qi charger with all that in there and that's maybe the first time we've seen that happen so um, it's great because you can Bluetooth and charge at the same time and for most people that's gonna be perfect do you lose a little auto audio quality by going through Bluetooth rather than um, than using the cable here yes you do and you can hear that difference 99% of the people don't care, so it's fine. But it is nice that you can keep your, your phone charged and still stream at the same time. So one of the other items that uh, make this comparison between the Mazda 6 and the this Toyota Camry uh, very apropos is the fact that their sticker prices are within a couple hundred dollars. So we'll get if I can pull it up here at the stoplight, I'll, I'll grab both of these. Monroney's here and roll them off to you. So this Toyota uh, XSE as equipped is 35,333. The Mazda 6 was 36,040. So they're within $700 of each other. Close enough. Um, you know, if you can't negotiate 700 bucks when you go in to buy a vehicle or find some kind of discount, then that's on you. So these cost the same, let's, close enough as makes no difference, the same amount of money. And it's an interesting figure because that's about the average transaction price of a new vehicle today in the United States. Again, we go back to which would you rather drive? I'd rather drive the Mazda. Um, it's just a better overall package. You know, as far as front seat room, rear seat room, trunk room, they're all close, right? Um, everyone measures up against everyone else. And so you're picking nits as to which you like. For me, and and what I like, what we like, just in driving pretty much everything in this category over the years, the Mazda drives better. Not that it's a driver's car. Uh, again, as we said in that video, you're reaching if you want to call that a driver's car. No, it's just a well put together family four door sedan. The thing that you're gonna have with Toyota is that they sell 300,000 of these things a year. They're dead reliable. It's gonna run forever. You you can put half a million miles on this thing and not worry. It's, you know, the wear and tear is gonna be fine. But if you ask me if I've got, if, if you're gonna make me choose between the two, I'll, I'll choose the Mazda 6 every time. I just prefer the interior. I'll deal with the, the infotainment system. I'll get around it and I'll, I'll deal with it over time which makes the point that has Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay. This does not in the future, the next year or two, I think it will, but as of this, uh, as we're testing this now, another 2018 model year, it does not. So that's another advantage for the Mazda. Um, there's nothing wrong with this vehicle. There isn't, it's, it's fine. For a family four-door sedan, you know, buy it, never think about it again. But given the choice, I'd choose something else. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Robostrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive.